An Idiot Abroad. Coming this January to Science Channel. An Idiot Abroad is a game changer for us. It's smart, has genuine information about culture and the wonders of the world, and it brings humor to our network. The eight-episode docu-series follows the grandest practical joke turned social experiment we've seen in a very long time. It features Ricky Gervais and Stephen Merchant, the Emmy award-winning geniuses behind The Office, Extra, and many other incredible projects, and their friend, Carl Pilkington. I think Carl uh, uh, sees, sees things um, very different to the rest of us. He's a true artist. He sees the world differently. He, he does investigate. He does do what science does. He says why, how, without prejudice as well. And I think that's what's nice. And that can be provocative, but you've got to realise... Sorry, I've got to stop you, mate, because the little earpiece has come off in his ear. He's terrified. He's terrifying people. <laughs> oh my God! It has come out. All right, don't panic. Oh. Calm down. Oh. Calm down. Oh, sorry, sorry. So, can you hear us, or is it just is it still in there, or is it? It's it's stuck in there. But can you hear us? Is can we get any... some tweezers? I can right. hear it. Can you hear it? Yeah. Okay. Right. This happened once. He went to the shops and he he with it, and the. <laughs> He had an earbud sticking out, and he didn't know till he got home and looked in the mirror. He'd been shopping with an earbud. Just <laughs> so there's the science. How does this man function, for Christ's sake? That's the science. You got it. It's all right. It's out, We're okay. It's out, it's out, it's out. Uh, for Carl, uh, just to follow up on that. Uh, I mean, I know you, these guys like they're your mates and stuff, but don't you get sick of them calling you a moron? Yeah. <laughs> Do you think of yourself as a moron? It does my head in. But... No, and I think pe when people watch the programme, they'll realise that I'm not a div. Um, they'll, they'll see themselves in me, I think. Most normal people who, you know, aren't travellers and go to foreign places and stuff, it, it is a shock to the system. Um, mm. And I think, I think they'll see themselves in me. But it is, it does get on my nerves with, you know, they're always annoying me, and <laughs> I know people always sort of say, "Oh, it must be great being mates with Ricky," but it isn't. <laughs> <laughs> I'll tell you what it's like. It's like when um, when you get a dog, and it seems like a good idea at the time, doesn't it? You go, oh, "It'd be great to have a dog around the house," and then you realise it's a pain in the arse and it's shitting everywhere. But everyone's going, "Oh, what a cute dog!" The people who come round love that dog. But they don't know what it's like, the ins and outs of having that dog. And that's what it's like having him as a mate. So um, he was kidnapped um, without realising. Uh, two men appeared, put a bag over his head and dragged him into the back of a van. That was a highlight that's for you, good, wasn't it? it? Yeah, and he, he thought it was real. And it's one of the funniest two minutes of television I've ever been involved in. <laughs> he was honestly terrified. Thoughts, Carl? I, I, was, I was properly terrified. Um, I was talking about it today, I, I was aware that I had a... A heart. Do you know, like when you get stressed out, your heart beats harder than it normally does. I could feel it in my head. Um, <laughs> and I'm not sort of an adrenaline junkie. I'm not the sort of person who likes danger. I don't do bungee jumping, uh, skateboarding. What else? You don't do anything. <laughs> no, I, I, I don't. I don't need that sort of danger in my life. So to suddenly be sort of being battered and a bag over the head, chucked in the back of a van, and that, I think. Probably the most the scariest I've ever been. Your, your day isn't an average day. What you do isn't an average day. You don't do anything normal. It annoys you when you call me and I'm at home doing DIY or whatever. But that is a normal life. Right. And I, I think... I don't think you live in the real world, really. Because that's not my job. Plumbing and tiling and grouting and... I called him once and he had his hand down a drain, just covered in shit and pubic hair. He was loving it. Okay, why am I, why am I gonna go, ooh, I've got any drains blocked, right? I earn more than a drain cleaner. So why would I do it myself when I can hire a drain cleaner? He, he's embarrassed by doing this. I love him, I love his attitude, he's great. I can't believe we found this man who is never gonna be touched and ruined by fame, right? It's but, not even about that. Well, I don't understand why you're happy to hand over a load of money when it's something you can do yourself. It doesn't matter how much you earn. Because I'm, I'm busy. I'm off. busy. I'm doing this. You're not this. busy all the time. What I've seen I... you. You leave the office with him at half three. 
No, but you'd still get someone in to clear the shit out of your Carl, brains. because we're intense, we work for three hours, and when... We're geniuses. They said it, they said it earlier. We're genius. They said that. We're geniuses. Einstein right. didn't put his hand down bombs. Can I just <laughs> ask? The person who asked the question, I couldn't hear your name because there's a lot of noise and delay and everything. Do you put your hand down the drain and clear your own shit out, or do you pay for someone to do it? <laughs> I know the answer. What was the answer? I call my she, she calls her managers, or her, the maintenance people. She does not do it. Manager? Apartment manager. Like her building manager, building not manager. the building manager. who's her boss at work. <laughs> That's the science right here. <laughs> How does it function? How has it lived for 38 years? We don't know. Let's ask science. For Carl, uh, Carl, if they're going to see you as sort of a lovable moron, um, how would you describe Stephen and Ricky? Mm. Uh, are you the real brains of this operation? Or... Um... I've always described Steve as weird. That hasn't changed in the seven years I've known you. What? Um, Why is he weird? It's just when, when I first met you, the, the look of you, there's no point, uh, you know that, I've told you time and time again, it was just a shock. The height, <laughs> it didn't help because you're next to something that's smaller than the norm anyway. <laughs> so you two came in, it was a shock. Um, I've got used to it now. If I don't see you for a few weeks now and again, I sort of go, bloody hell. <laughs> but I've got used to it, but I'd say, Strange is, is, the, is the description for Steve. With Ricky, uh, I kind of think, uh, like an iron lung. <laughs> that, that I sort of need him, but I wish I didn't. <laughs> <laughs> Ricky, Carl, Steve, thank you so much for being here today. An Idiot Abroad, coming this January to Science Channel.